the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Which way do I go now? I heard that way's good. Who said that? Toto, scarecrows can't talk. <laughs> Maybe that way too. Now I could have sworn he was just pointing in the other direction. Maybe both ways I heard. Why you were talking. Are you doing that on purpose, or can you just not make up your mind? Ah, uh, I don't have a mind. I don't have a brain. All I have is straw. Oh, come on. You couldn't talk if you didn't have a brain. How can you speak? I don't know. Well, what would you do if you had one? Well. I would while away the hours conversing with the flowers, consulting with the rain. And my head, I'd be scratching when my thoughts were barely hatching if I only had a brain. I would do all my thinking, I'd be another Lincoln if I only had a brain. Say! <laughs> Even Toto loved it, your song. But you know, I just had this great idea when I was listening to you sing. I'm going to see the wizard in Emerald City because I want to get home. Maybe you could come with me. Maybe he could give you a brain. Oh, that sounds great. I'd love that. We're, We're off, off to, to see, see the, the wizard, wizard, the wonderful wizard, wizard of, of us. <laughs> Oh, man, what a Sunday, huh? I was like, okay, so how are we going to follow living in the presence and we are all just floating in the presence with silliness and Oz? But I tell you, you're a great crowd. You just go with it, whatever's there, you know? <laughs> Sacred to the silly. It's just like no problem, right? <laughs> and Scarecrow, you remind us, you know, you're so clever, actually. How is it that Scarecrow has no brain? but knows that he has no brain, or thinks he has no brain, and can even desire to have one if he doesn't have a brain. You might ask yourself a similar question about anything that you think you're somehow less than or missing in your life. Because wherever that missing piece is, or that perceived missing piece, or that perceived sense of inadequacy or lack, when you begin to really look at it, you realize, well, that's just crazy, right? It's not the truth of who I am. Because we know, and we come here every Sunday to remember, just as the song said at the meditation, I am remembering who I am. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, hopefully each day, each breath, each moment. Right? And when we rest in that place of infinite presence, we recognize that that realm of Oz isn't so far away. You know, it seems distinct, because in our minds, we make it distinct. We make it like that sepia or that black and white Kansas experience of dread and dreariness and depression area and dust bowl experience of Dorothy to technicolor dreaming somewhere over the rainbow. But in truth, it's just like right there, right? It's just a breath away, a laugh away, a moment away. All together we went into that place of living in the presence of God, and then all together we went into laughter and joy. Because we are able, we are malleable, we, we have that potential and that, and that realized potential in every moment. So if you get stuck in thinking that this world, in all of its imperfections, let's say, <laughs> let's be kind and say imperfections, all those pained places that we have when we look out into the world and see things working in a different way than we might imagine with our, our vision, our visionary eyes and our visionary hat on and our visionary heart open wide. 
We all want the, the joy and the love and the peace and the harmony, of course. We know that, right? But sometimes it feels far away. And so we can be like Scarecrow thinking it's impossible or I don't have or it's not there. But that's never true, is it? It's just a, a breath, a moment, a collective sigh. And we say, oh, that's right. <laughs> that's who I am. And that's what the journey to Oz is all about. It's not very far away, actually. And so today, as we meet the character Scarecrow, we're really, we are the heroine or the hero on our own journey, just like Dorothy. And we meet these different aspects of ourselves along the way, like Dorothy does. And that first aspect is the mind, is the, the, the mind, and we're going to specifically look at the brain for a few moments, that organ, that thinking organ. That often, you know, on the spiritual journey, gets kind of a bad rap. Right? <laughs> we tend to focus a lot on the emotional and the spiritual and, and try to sort of, you know, push the, the brain aside in a way or the intellect aside in a way. But it's important that we don't discount the intellect and the brain because it does so much for us, you know. It's really kind of a holistic experience along the journey. So we come to the fork in the road like like Dorothy does, and we're at that choice point. Which way do I go? What choice do I make? And so there is a gut knowing, right? There is that spiritual intuition that, that guidance is always available to us. Some moments it seems a lot more present than others, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so when we can, get, we can get ourselves sort of muddled in that place of, of worrying about which way we go. In fact, most of the time there's just sort of I notice this when I'm hiking, too. I think, oh, no, which way do I go? And often it's one of those little you know, <laughs> loops that just brings you right back to the path, right? Did you notice that? <laughs> and, so, and, and if we do go a different way, who's to say it's the wrong way? <laughs> just because it's the scenic route, right? Just because we learn a few more lessons along the way because we went left <laughs> instead of right doesn't mean it was the wrong way. So, so there's, we, we kind of worry ourselves a little too much, don't we? That's one of the uses of the brain that's not so productive. But if instead what we do is we follow that intuitive urge, that it, and the more we practice that, the sharper it gets and more present it is for us to make decisions in the moment. And then we use the brain as a, as a tool that then helps us execute our action. Then the brain helps us, you know, plan and move ahead and set goals and sort of, you know, take action and, 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 and maybe write our path again if it doesn't feel quite right along the way. So thank goodness for this brain, right? <laughs> thank goodness for this magnificent thinking machine that we have. I know we also criticize it a lot in our spiritual circles because, you know, it just keeps going on and on and we're trying to meditate or whatever it is, you know. But here's the thing, when we are aware of that, <laughs> when we are aware of the thinking mind, we just become aware of, we're in the, when they're in the place of awareness and consciousness. So that's exactly where we want to be on our spiritual journey. The mind is going, the brain is going to think because that's its job. <laughs> so we don't have to give it a hard time for thinking and doing its job. But instead to praise the gift that it is to praise the possibility that it offers us and the potentiality that it offers us. And so speaking of potentialities, I don't know if anybody noticed my shoes. <laughs> I worked hard to get that glitter. <laughs> And actually, Jane Houston, the author of our book, The Wizard of Us, that we're using in this series, this is our second week of the series, by the way, if you're just joining us. And, and in it, she talks about the ruby slippers representing our capacities. And so we, we literally fill our shoes, right? We fill the shoes of spirit. We, few, we fill the shoes of our entelechy, which is the Greek word for our higher self. That's what Glinda represents. Glinda is the good witch of the north, and she shows up in that first scene when Dorothy's house lands on the, on the wicked witch of the east. And remember, the shoes are sticking out. <laughs> and, then, and then Dorothy's just kind of getting a whole... She doesn't even see that part. She's just sort of looking around to Oz like, where the heck have I landed? This is 
fantastic. Is this the other side of the rainbow or what's going on? You know, you must imagine what she's maybe thinking at that time. And then all of a sudden comes this floating ball, this beautiful pink floating ball. And out of it pops Glinda, the good witch of the north. Remember her? And then Glinda begins to tell Dorothy, well, first she asks her what kind of witch she is, because the munchkins are wondering if she's a good witch or a bad witch, because the fact that she, you know, the house fell on the wicked witch of the east means she must have some serious magic. <laughs> so Dorothy is already being greeted from the first person who speaks to her in the realm of spirit. Stick with me, Oz, the realm of spirit, right? The first person who speaks with her asks her, are you a good witch or are you a bad witch? Do you bring good magic or bad magic? Because clearly you're powerful. Right? So she's immediately reminded as soon as she shifts into spiritual consciousness of how powerful she is. And then there's a conversation about her capacities, these shoes. And so now Glinda shows, you know, brings attention to the shoes and how, well, they think you're a witch because, you know, the, good, the wicked witch of the East is is dead, and, and, and you've kind of you know, wiped out their enemy, essentially. <laughs> and so then there's a whole scene, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West shows up, and, and then Glinda transfers the shoes, which Sister Wicked Witch of the West wants off of her dead sister's feet because they're magic, and Glinda transfers them to Dorothy's feet. What Dorothy has no idea of yet is her power, her capacities, her gifts, where she's landed, and who is in front of her. Glinda, the, the witch, good witch of the north, is, is her divine potentiality. It's her higher self. And at one point, it's really sweet in the movie, she's behind, Glinda's behind Dorothy, facing the other witch, the wicked witch of the west, and she's got her wand around her, and she's, she's like hugging her. And I love that image, because it's like, got your back. You know? <laughs> The best part of us is here, is guiding our way, is behind us, is within us, is before us, is beside us, is with us along the journey. Dorothy doesn't know any of that yet. I don't know, do you? I remember and forget and remember and forget. How about you? I could use one of those wands. <laughs> but you know what, we've all got the shoes. We've all got the capacities, we've all got the gifts, we've all got them sitting there ready for us to slip our feet into and walk out into the world with all the potentiality realized. That's the call of Oz. That's the call of the yellow brick road. It's the call of self-realization. And so we're being asked to step in and to recognize, and then the scarecrow comes along and says, let me show you some of your individual gifts. I'm going to start out with telling you about the brain, starting with the idea that you think you don't even have one. <laughs> and so wherever it is in your life that you feel is some kind of shortcoming or some perception of inadequacy or, or not knowing, remember the truth that you have all the fullness. It turns out that, that Scarecrow is one of Dorothy's smartest friends on the journey. <laughs> He's clever. He helps him think through all kinds of difficult spots, as, we, as you'll learn or be reminded of along our journey the next few weeks. And the brain, the brain itself is such an amazing, magnificent organ. I mean, the things it does, I don't know, like, I'm not even going to say the half of it. I don't know the, like, 1 25th of it or something like that. <laughs> but science keeps showing us the truth about the brain, and more and more that's being revealed about the magnificence of this organ that we have. And one of the things that we used to believe is that we had, like, we weren't using the full capacity of our brain, and that humans used maybe 10%. I've even heard, you know, maybe only 1%. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And actually, they're saying now that's actually not true, that all those different regions of the brain are used that what we're talking about when we're talking about the capacity of the brain is, is the newer research that talks about neuroplasticity, which means that the brain is adaptable. It's always willing to change and move and grow in new ways. And so that's really where the work happens. And that is great news for us as spiritual students and as students of new thought, because that's what our work is all about. It's all about rewiring 
basically creating new grooves of understanding, getting aligned with the divine and remembering who we are and then acting and knowing and reminding ourselves and reminding each other of that fact that we are divine, that we are already seen and known in our realized potential. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Michael Mersinich is, is somebody who's known for his science his, uh, around this area of neuroplasticity. And another author, Norman Doge, says in The Brain That Changes Itself about Michael's work, he says, the brain that Mersinich describes is not an inanimate vessel to be filled. That's not what it is. It's actually more like a living, breathing thing that needs nourishment and exercise. So it's like this is, this is that living, breathing thing that you're taking care of. And as you take care of it, you help it have the healthy possibilities of making new connections where you believe yourself less than to reconnect to the full potential of who you are. Where you judge another as less than or greater than or better than or all that junk that we do, the comparing and the judging and all that, it helps you get clean and clear with that and have clean and clear circuitry so that the groove is being made again and again and exercised again and again and expanded into all the possibility of which we have come. That's why I'm wearing the shoes and I'm inviting you to wear them too, because it's the full capacity and it's fun. I mean, that's the thing that I love about Wizard of Oz is it's, or any kind of story like this is it reminds us of that, that this journey, it's not so serious, you know? This is good for like Capricorns like me to remember. It's not so serious, you know? It's like lighten up, have fun with it. Skip and sing once in a while. <laughs> because whenever we change up our routines, we open up the adaptability of not only the brain, but our whole consciousness. And we can then grow and be in that joy that we were meant to live in, to dwell in, to be in that realm, that realm of Oz, a realm of joy, a realm of play. So, you know, there's a, there was an article that I read years ago about a father and son. And the father knew something about the developing brain. And so instead of just praising his son when he did things that he did really well, he would actually make a point of praising his son when he was really struggling. Like when he was trying something new and he really couldn't get it and he was getting really frustrated, that's when his father would lay on the praise. Because what he knew was this research, that the more that we try new things, the more we grow and open into the infinite consciousness that we are. So if we're kind of stuck in, it's always got to be this way, this way, this way, then we're in that limited space, you know, of, of I, can't, I can't get out of, you know, into the next level. It's like the frog that can't get out of the pot, you know, it's like doesn't, doesn't realize, like if the lid's off, I could be free, you know. So it, it's the same for us. It's like we get in that, that kind of limitation space and we don't realize, oh, I could set myself free if I just exercised and opened this up a little bit. So literally, there, you, know, you probably know about the brain gym exercises that sort of you know, bring the holistic, the body, the mind, the spirit together. And you can do all kinds of things that help the left and right brain connect, which helps all the health of all of this. So some of the things you can do is just kind of crisscrossing exercises. So this is kind of a fun one to do with some bright scarves, and you just sort of you know, throw them up in each, each direction. And then you can add something to it that is a spiritual affirmation. You know, I am balanced. I am in harmony. My left and brain hemispheres are healthy and well and whole. My mind is clear. And I am, and I am uh, thinking with, with just infinite spiritual clarity about all the decisions before me and about every step of my life, you know. Or, or you could do the one that my chiropractor taught me, which is also good for the back. And you just kind of, you know, as you're doing this, you could talk about, you could tell yourself, I'm moving toward realizing my full dreams. I'm accomplishing my goals with it, you know. So whatever it is that you're up to, in other words, there is a way to connect all these aspects of being and open up into infinite consciousness. Because the brain is the organ 
But the consciousness or the mind, the word mind, is really about fuller than that. It's about thoughts and feelings and memories and beliefs and like the whole, the whole enchilada, if you will, of consciousness. You know? And that's really what Scarecrow is bringing us. He's saying, if I only had a brain, and that's a part of it and an important part of it, but there's more. There's always more. So, so this infinite consciousness that we are, Jean Houston says, you are infinite consciousness. And she says, you are localized. That infinite consciousness is localized in a human brain with untold powers. Infinite consciousness localized. So it's, it's you know, focused in, in this area, but it's got untold powers. Because we are one with the divine intelligence that created us, right? So we always have that, that ability to tap that fully. I had a friend that used to say, you know, whatever it is you want to do that you don't think you know how to do, just download it. <laughs> said, you want to cook Indian food? Download it. Recipes will come. <laughs> and you know, half of the battle is believing that, right? Half of it is opening your mind enough to say that's possible. And so if we can dwell in the possibility, and that's why Oz helps us, because we get into that pretend realm that children go into so easily, and it opens up a whole new world. And we, well, hey, what's pretend anyway? Is it that so-called real world, or is it you know, this world? It's all one, right? That's what I love about, if you've been to Greece before, when they speak about myths, the tour guides talk about the Greek myths as if it's, I remember at first I was listening with, with my, you know, American mind going, now is that true or is that, you know, I, I don't know which part is historically, you know, and then I finally realized, oh, I get it. It's all the same to them because the myth is alive and real and true. So it's not about facts. It's, it's, about, it's about what's alive in us, what resonates as truth in us. And so the same is true of the Wizard of Oz. It's a myth. It's a code, it's a map, it's a road, it's a code of your soul, it's a map of your life. It's a road of choices before you. And that's the spiritual journey, if nothing else, right? So the inspiration is one of the things that we can call upon that helps us with really expanding consciousness, which is what we're all about on this leg of the journey. And wherever it is that you might think you get inspiration, Go there. <laughs> and I want to invite you to do things you don't normally do. Years ago, I was invited to marry uh, some friends in New York City. And I had a free morning, so I went to Central Park. And I can't tell you the overload of inspiration I received in a couple of hours. I mean, just walking around and, and the magic of everything that would just pop up. You know, all of a sudden, I'd be walking, and there was Minnie Mouse in full costume, you know? <laughs> And then a little bit later, there was a man with these enormous, you know, bubbles, those huge bubbles that just float around in rainbow colors. And then I came upon statues of literary giants and explorers. And then I kept walking, and there was a guy playing cello and an, and an instrument next to him I'd never seen before that sounded beautiful. And so it's when we experience those new things in new places, and you don't have to go to exotic different places. You don't have to get in a plane or even in your car. Just switch things up a little bit. You know, like Robin Williams and Dead Poet Society. Get up on your desk and look from a different perspective. Remember that when he had all the boys in their little suits, you know? And they were like not sure that they could do it. He's like, come on, get up there, you know? And so one by one, they'd get up on the desk and he would fill them with the possibility of who they were in truth. That's what we want to do for each other, isn't it? Shift, shift the perspective slightly, and we are in a whole different world. So when you walk into a conversation, or you overhear a conversation, or maybe you're in a conversation that's gossipy or negative, and it's feeling like really, ugh, you know, and you're talking about the latest news, and you're feeling sort of, ugh. And, and just step, if you can, for a moment into your shoes. Because then you're not going to want to talk about that stuff, honestly. I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't talk about those things, but you know, just play with me for a minute here. <laughs> because we can talk about them in a different way. And how we can talk about them is to up-level them. 
And that's really what I'm talking about, right? It's not that we can't talk about things that matter or serious things, but we can up-level the whole game. We can up-level the whole way of thinking and feeling and expressing when we go, we, we go to the high road with it, you know? We take the high road through Oz. And then when we take that high road, we have a different perspective, a broader perspective, a bigger picture perspective, and that's what comes forth from our hearts. And you know what? Nine times out of 10, maybe 10 out of 10, everybody around you who's been in that gossipy or negative conversation will go, oh, thank God somebody broke up that energy. You know, Even on some cellular level, even if they're not aware of it consciously, there'll be that kind of sigh in the room. It's like prayer chaplains, when we do our prayer chaplains training, and we say, you know, when somebody comes to you for prayer, sometimes they're in their story and they're in their story and it's like, it's, it's, the, you know, it's, it's the grief of it or it's the difficulty of it. And I always notice when I say, how about we just pray about that? It's like, oh, thank God. You know, <laughs> like, save me from my story, you know? Save us from that, making that groove in our brains over and over again that takes us down that negative route. Because we got a choice in every moment to say no to that and yes to the spirit and the divinity and the divine intelligence that we are. So just, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so as we step in then, in a way, to our shoes, we get it, and we live it, and we express it, and we move in the spirit. We speak with the spirit. Brenly and I were recently out, and this young woman was going to take her LSAT the next day, the, the exam that you take for, for law school. And she was saying, you know, dismissive things, kind of like Scarecrow. She didn't say, I don't have a brain, but she said, well, you know, I'm going to try my best. You know, we'll see if I pass. And, and so, and we had just met her, you know, so I was being a little bit, you know, just kind of holding space, listening. And Brenly was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> You've got, to, you've got to reset that. She goes, you are ready for this. Are you kidding me? You're out dancing tonight. Good for you. You have studied for this. I bet you are so ready. You're confident. You look to be a very smart woman. I'm sure you're going to ace this thing tomorrow. No problem. And the girl, you could see, was just like standing up straighter and like, well, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I do have it. She said, well, yeah. And then she kind of started to try to go back a little bit. This was after she had stepped back a few steps, you know. <laughs> You know how people do. For a long time, I'd go to places and I wouldn't ever, and I actually usually don't, lead with, you know, what do you do? I'm the minister. And then I always get the two steps back. <laughs> so I've tried to be very creative about that, you know. I'm a teacher. I'm an educator. I'm a spir spiritual teacher. Yeah. <laughs> try to slip it in somehow. But it was kind of like that, you know, it was like that sort of, I'm not sure, but I kind of want some of this that you're offering. And so as she offered that to this woman, it was like she was handing her her ruby slippers, you know? And that's what we offer each other. That's the gift we can offer each other. Give somebody ruby slippers today, you know? See the truth about them. See them standing tall in the possibilities of all that they are as a divine being. See them in their Glinda nature, male or female, whatever version of Glinda that would be for you. You know, that, that truth, that, high, that highest self of you, whatever that image is for you. When you see yourself and you can feel yourself in the confidence and the spiritual authority from which you came from and have come for, then you can really... Feel it and be it and walk in it. And what a blessing to become. I mean, it's like you're, you're just handing out slippers left and right from that place because you're in the flow and you're having fun and you're, you're, you're the divine embodied. I mean, that is who we are, right? And so we come here, as was so aptly sung today, to remember who we are. And on this journey to Oz, we remember all along the way, each one of our characters giving this a great blessing. So Scarecrow, you know, stuck on his pole, you know, stuck in his place of limitation, is let down by Dorothy because who can let down those limiting parts of ourselves but only us, right? 
And so we release them and we say, come on on the journey. I see the truth in you. And I believe that you can have the full capacity of a clear and magnificent mind that remembers. You know, you're never too old to develop further the possibilities of both the brain and the conscious mind. And so together we do that. We are magnificently clear in our minds. And we are a part of always in the fullness of that divine intelligence. So let's affirm that together, knowing this, this truth. My mind is magnificently clear. I am divinely intelligent. So it is.